Hello and welcome to this prism tutorial. My name's Glenn Smith. We're going to be doing a tutorial on making 2D images 3D by using a technique called parallaxing. So we're going to be using Photoshop and After Effects to create this technique. We're going to go from a photo and we're going to take that photo and change it into a 3D image so it looks like it was filmed on a video camera. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need two images. You're going to have to take one image that's with a green screen or something in the background that's going to be easy for you to cut out because it makes it a lot simpler if you're cutting out a lot of these images to cut rounder. If not, it doesn't matter, you don't need a green screen, you can just cut rounder but it does make it a lot, a lot easier and that's the technique that we're going to be showing you today. So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need this background without anything in it. You don't want, you don't want the actress or actors or whatever you've got, you don't want them in it. You just want that background plate that you can use so you can superimpose her once you've cut her out onto that image. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is we're going to cut rounder with the lasso tool. So this is going to be a really rough cut, just really roughly cut all the way rounder. And once you've done that, you want to right click and select inverse. So now you've got the inverse selected, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to delete that space. So if you drag the padlock down to the bin, so you've unlocked the layer. And if you press backspace, you will have deleted all the outside area. So now all we've got in the image is just Lucy with a little bit of the green sheet that we've got behind her. And now we're going to use a color key, or Photoshop's color range tool, to key out the green around her. Okay, so you're going to have to use the eyedropper and you're going to pick up all the green areas that you can. It's going to show in this black and white image here and the white are the sections that you're going to be cutting out. The black is the sections that are going to be left there. And if you hold the shift button, then you can add certain areas. So you're going to want to take all the green you can out of the picture. You can change the selection preview here to grayscale so you can actually see what you're what you're doing, what you're adding and removing from the image. If you alter the fuzziness, you're going to be changing the threshold that you're going to be keying out of this image. So you're going to want to play around with that as well until you get a really nice looking silhouette that you're going to, that you're going to be able to cut out. There you go. So once we've done that, you're going to want to hit OK. And there we go, we've got the selection around her and that's kind of showing us what we're going to be selecting from the image. As you can see around that, that little area there, we don't really want that section so we'll deselect that by using the lasso and hitting, holding Alt. You can circle around that and that will deselect the area. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do just to make that edge as, as good as we can so she looks like she fits into the scene really well. We don't want a sharp edge or anything like that. So we're going to select inverse and go to the refine edge button. Here we can see a refined edge that we're going to be able to change the edge that we've done. You can change all the different overlays so the way you can see it we're going to keep to this view mode at the moment. So you're going to want to click on smart radius and bring up the radius on that. You can play around with this. If you can't really see what you're doing, then change it to overlay. There we go. You can see a lot better what we're actually doing to the picture. If you zoom in. Also, what I've selected here is decontaminate colors. What's that, what that's going to get rid of is any of the green that's kind of stuck to the edge of her that we haven't quite cut out. It's going to try, it's going to do its best to feather out that and get rid of it. So if we press OK, we're going to get a new layer with a layer mask on it. And as you can see, that's nicely cut her out. Her hair, which is the main area where there was green left, is kind of feathered. It's not perfect. Obviously, you can take a lot more time with this and you can delete a lot more. So what this layer mask means is you can now edit the picture using black and white and the alpha channels to subtract and add portions of the picture back to the image. So as you can see, I'm using black here with a brush and I can delete her face. If, if I use white, I'll add parts back onto the image. This is really, really handy when you're trying to edit any of these kind of pictures because if you want to add on little sections, you've got that layer mask. You don't have to use the eraser, which is going to take away stuff that you want to keep. And you can get that edge perfect. So you, you're totally happy with it. 
So there we've got our cutout image. We're going to want to take that image and pull it over into our background plate. <clears throat> you can see she fits quite nicely into the scene and she's totally movable. Uh, we're not going to be seeing her feet in the final composite, so we won't worry about that for now. So we can move her around as much as we want, which is perfect for the end result. So what we need now, we're going to need to add more depth to the scene, as at the moment it's just a background and Lucy. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to cut out this floor and this tree. And that should add another layer of depth if we bring that out from the background. To do this, we're going to be using the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a great tool for cutting out. If you haven't used it before, I'd definitely recommend using it and getting to grips with it. But basically, wherever you click, it creates a new point. And this new point connects with the last point and it makes a shape. If you hold down the button, when you click, you can bend and make these bezier curves, which are really handy for going around like circular objects if you want to get something smooth. But for now, we're just going to do a really rough cut out of this floor and this tree. And we're going to speed it up just because it's quite boring to watch. After doing so many, you do become brain dead. Uh, but this is just part of the job. If you want to get that result, you've got to cut them out really nicely. Okay, we're nearing the end of cutting out there. As you can see, I keep using the hand tool here. If you hold down the space bar while you're on any other any other tool, you can use the hand tool and grab areas of the areas of the picture that you can move about. It's really handy to use when you're using the pen tool. So there we go, we've got our path, which we're going to be able to make a selection from. We can look at it in the paths tab over here. That's our work path we've used. And you can either select on there or you can go on here and right click if you're still on the pen tool and make selection. And that's going to make a selection for you, but you're going to want to feather this a little bit so it doesn't just cut out a solid shape. You want that feathered edge so it can really blend in with the rest of the scene. Okay, so now you've got that. Go back to the marquee tool. There we go. And if you right click on the selection that you've got, now layer via cut, that's going to create a new layer out of that tree and that floor. From make sure the background layer is selected and you've got rid of that. You've unlocked that layer there. The layer via cut. There you go. So we've cut that out now, but what it's done is it's left this background totally empty. And that's going to be a problem for us because if we move that when we're parallaxing, we're going to see things behind it. And that's not, we don't want that. We want to make it look like that is away from the background and that you'd be able to go behind the tree and you'd be able to see the forest behind it. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the magic wand tool and select the background layer. Make sure you've got that magic wand selected. There you go. And select that area. So there you can see because we feathered the area, it's not quite gone all the way up to the edge. So if we go to select, modify and expand, we can expand that selection. So we're actually filling a lot more of that area. So we're actually adding a bit more just to make sure that we're actually filling all the gaps. And if we feather that radius as well, so if you right click and feather, we can get a nice smooth edge when we fill it. So if we go to the marquee tool and right click and click fill, you'll see content aware. And this is where Photoshop is brilliant. It can analyze an area and it can fill it with what it thinks should be there. So this may take a little while on certain computers, it, it depends, just let it do its job. And once it's done, it should look a bit like this. And that's come out pretty well. You can't really tell that that's that different from the rest of the picture. You would just, obviously there's no floor there, so that's a bit odd. But if we turn on the other layer, we'll show that, there we go, we'll show that it doesn't really look that odd. And now we can move that tree layer Brilliant, that's exactly what we need. And it looks like that tree layer has never been there before and that background was all filled. Okay, so now we're ready. We've got all our three layers and we're ready to bring these into After Effects. To make things easier, we're gonna rename these layers. We'll name this one tree and we'll name this one background and we'll name this one girl. Okay, so we've now we've got this layer mask. We don't really need this layer mask anymore. We'll apply that layer mask by right clicking on the mask. There we go, and now we've got all those three layers, and we're ready to go over to After Effects. So let's save this document as a PSD. Okay, so once you've saved this, 
fire up After Effects and we'll get started with the parallaxing. Okay, so we're now in After Effects and the first thing we're going to want to do is import the footage. So if we go up to File here and Import, okay, you're going to want to bring your Photoshop file in as a composition. So Import as Composition Retain Layer Sizes, open that up. And it's going to ask you editable layer styles or merge layer styles. Um, just go for editable layer styles, that's fine. And click OK. What you're going to have now is you're going to have a composition and a folder. And the folder is full of the layers that you've got. The composition is a pre-comp that's been made of your layers. So you can just use this pre-comp and start off straight away by double clicking that. So there we go. We've got our three layers in the composition there. You can see the girl, the tree and the background. You've got your timeline as well and your composition window showing you what the video is going to look like. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so we're going to go to our timeline window and if you right click in the timeline window, you can click new camera. Okay, so you're going to get the camera settings window come up. We're going to want to change this to 35mm, which is pretty standard. And change this name to camera settings. All of those settings look fine. We don't want the depth of field. Everything's good there, so we'll click OK. You might get this warning, don't worry about it, just click OK. OK, so now we've got our camera. First of all, we're going to find a way to easily move the camera around so we can keyframe the positions and make it move from left to right, forwards or backwards, wherever we want this camera to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new null object. Now a null object is what it kind of says, it's pretty much nothing. It's just an object you can use to control other things. It's, you can't see it on the screen. So it's just there, it's an invisible object. And we're going to rename this camera controls, the null object camera controls. Right, what we're going to need to do, what I've already done here, is check the box with the cube in it. And what that does, it makes your layers 3D so that you can then control the X, Y and the Z, the Z axis being the forwards and backwards. And what we're going to use is, we're going to use this null or camera controls now to control the camera. To do this, you can grab this little swirly icon, which is the pick whip, and you can pull it over to the camera controls. And there you go, you've parented the camera settings to the camera controls. So by moving the null object now, we'll be able to move the camera and that will create that, that motion. So now we're going to go into two views just to, so I can show you what's going on here. So this is from a top down view. So the second view is from a top down view. And what we can see here is, is our camera. That's our camera looking at the screen from a top down view. And that's its field of view. That triangle is its field of view there. So now we've got all of our layers on a flat plane at the moment. And so if I move one of these layers back in Z space, you'll see that it moves back in the active camera as well. They are now all a different distance from each other in Z space. So there you go. That's just to show you what's going on when you're moving these layers about. And remember, that's from a top down view. So let's go back to the active camera now. Go back to one view. And we can see that all these layers are now, they're all the wrong size. So we need to resize them back to their original size. And now we're going to use the principle of parallaxing. And the way I think about parallaxing is if you're on a train and you look far away, the things in the distance are moving a lot slower than the things that are closer to you. And this translates into After Effects and into the virtual camera movements that we're going to be using. So if we go to our null layer here and I just move it left and right, you can see how the objects in the background move a lot slower left and right than the ones in the foreground. This is what creates that idea that it's 3D, that you're looking at a moving image big, and it almost tricks your eyes into believing that you're looking at a 3D scene. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to keyframe these movements so that when we play the video out, it plays out as a left to right movement, as a forward to back movement, whatever movement you want to happen. If we click the little arrow, it will open up the camera controls. There we go. And you can click the down arrow on the transform. It'll show us a list of options. We want to use the position. So you want to click the keyframe button, which is that stopwatch. And it will create a keyframe. As you can see, the yellow dot is a keyframe. So you're going to want to move that timeline a bit further on. 
and you're going to want to make a new keyframe at that end position. So instead of clicking the stopwatch this time, you click the little keyframe button to the left of the stopwatch. So on this second keyframe, you're going to want to change the position from the original position. And you can do that by altering the numbers in the position. You can drag them left and right, and you see on screen it will move the camera left and right. So get it into a position that you feel like the camera should stop. And at a basic level, that's pretty much it. You've cut out the picture, you've put it into 3D space, and now you've keyframed the movement to happen during a certain amount of time. You can change things like orientation as well if you want to add a bit of orientation. Obviously, if I show you here, if you go way too far on the orientation, you can actually see how the layers are positioned in Z space. But you can really do whatever you want with it. It's up to you. Get creative. So that's the end of the tutorial. Sorry if it was a bit long. Uh, we wanted to go from a beginner standpoint so everyone could have a go at it. But we look forward to seeing what you guys can come up with. Please send us any of the videos you make with this technique. It'd be great to see what you guys can do. And check out Prism's Facebook for updates on all the new tutorials. We're going to be giving away free stock footage, free music. So keep up to date with us and uh, you better subscribe. I think there's a button there. You should probably press it. That's a good button. It's a top button. It takes you to great places. So subscribe there and we'll see you soon.